Hey, it's Todd Harold. I'm back at you again. We're going to talk today about the shuffle, a, uh, a a drum groove that's been around for a very long time and is used in all sorts of music. A lot of people think of it as coming out of blues. That's not necessarily true. It's not just a blues thing, although it, it is strongly associated with the blues. If you're not sure what a shuffle is, I'm going to show you right now. Now, we're going to actually t- we're going to talk about the shuffle, the straight up shuffle. We're not talking about the purdy shuffle, the halftime shuffle. We're not talking about straight ahead swing. We're talking about just the straight up shuffle and the variations on that and who who the innovators in that in that uh, field were in that for this groove. Now, I had a conversation one time with a guy who played keyboards in a very prominent blues group, and he said that the worst thing ever was when you called a shuffle at a blues jam and the drummer immediately went into the Rosanna groove, which indicated to everyone who actually knew how to play blues and knew how to play a shuffle that this guy, this drummer, did not know how to play a shuffle at all because the blues guys don't think of the Rosanna purdy halftime shuffle as being an actual shuffle they they think of that as something completely different i mean if you played that with bb king or bobby blue bland you'd be out on your ass so we're going to show you how to do an actual shuffle today and hopefully we'll get to some of the origins of that now a shuffle is essentially going to come from your triplet your triplet uh a groove. So anything that comes from one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh. and then we leave out in swing. We would leave out several more triplets. But what we're what we're going to do for this for this is we're going to leave out the middle triplet. So instead of one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, we're going to do one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh. Okay, so everything we do is going to be based on that. Now, back in the 40s and the 50s was really where the sort of the shuffle started to happen. You can you can you can hear it in a lot of the old big band recordings where it's just a straight up uh, one and three on the bass drum or quarters on the bass drum, two and four on the snare, and then that pattern on the ride cymbal. And we'll play that for you right now. This is sort of the old school big band coming out of the swing era kind of shuffle. Here it is now. So that was the that was the straight ahead shuffle. That's sort of the, your straight ahead coming out of the big band, coming out of the swing era. And then there was a guy named Odie Payne who recorded with this is what the way I understand it. Odie Payne recorded with Muddy Waters and a lot of other chess artists, chess records, great blues label back in the 1940s, 50s, 60s. And Odie Payne came up with what they called the double shuffle. So you have your 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 uh, hi hat or ride ride symbol part that goes one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, we talked about that. What we do is it's called the double shuffle because you just sort of double that with your left hand. Now you want to make sure you get a nice big strong accent on your snare drum on two and four as well. So here's the Odie Payne double shuffle for you. So that's the Odie Payne double shuffle. Now let's talk about variations on the Odie Payne double shuffle. A great example of this is if you check out one of the great blues groups of all time, and I think that they're underrated in thinking of them as a blues group, is the Allman Brothers Band. They had two drummers, Butch Trucks and J-Mo Johnson. And Butch and J-Mo, especially on this, uh, a great 
they had, well, they had killer double shuffles. Uh, right away on the Live at Fillmore East, there's several great shuffles, but there's one, Must Have Did Somebody Wrong. Um, and they've got the bass drum on one and the uh of two, one, one and a two and a. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four, right? So instead of quarters or one and three on the bass drum, they've got that thing. And when you're doing a double shuffle and you change your foot part, that can be a little challenging, but it follows the bass line. So if the bass isn't walking, boom, 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 boom. If the bass is doing uh, uh, do, do, uh, uh, you got to have that going on in your bass drum. You got to you got to play along with the bass player. You got to because otherwise you just sort of you're just sort of stomping through the whole song. You don't want to do that. You want to have dynamic variants. You want to have section variants. You want to make sure that and and it it causes you know hills and valleys. It creates hill, hills and valleys in your playing. So you don't want to just have like one shuffle. You don't want to just have the Odie Payne double shuffle. So here's the Butch and JMO, and that's not who came up with it. This is just what I'm calling it now. This is the Butch and JMO double shuffle with uh with one in the uh of one in the bass drum right now. All right, so we got that. Now let's talk about another variation, a very specific variation. One of the great R&B drummers of all time is a guy named John Jabbo Starks. John Jabbo Starks played on all a lot of those great. It was either Jabbo or Clyde Stubblefield that played on a lot of those old James Brown records. But people don't know that before that, James actually stole him from Bobby Blue Bland's band. Bobby Blue Bland, great blues artist, had a tune called... Uh, further on up the road, came out in the early 60s before uh, James stole Jabbo away from um, from Bobby Blue Bland. And the thing about this groove is that you've got your four on the floor on the bass drum. One, two, three, four. You've got your two and four on the hi-hat. you got your double shuffle happening over here. And you got your double shuffle happening over here. But instead of two and four being accented, we accent the uhs of the beat. So it's one, a uh, two, a uh, three, a uh, four, a uh, one. Uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, uh. And it's, boy, it's kind of hard to keep your balance. you got to make sure that your quarter's happening real strong on that. And we'll play that for you now. The Jabbo Starks, what do we call it? The, well, it's, it's either called a Texas Shuffle or a Flat Tire Shuffle. I like to think of it as the Flat Tire Shuffle because if you ever had a flat tire, you get that cluck, cluck, cluck. And that's kind of what it reminds me of is that flat tire. Ooh, got one, got one, got one. Here it comes now. Jabbo Starks, Flat Tire Shuffle. Now we're going to move into the rock age as far as the the more straight ahead, what we're used to as far as shuffles. Maybe uh, Some Kind of Wonderful by Grand Funk or something like that when the rock drummers started to get it. And they, they kind of eliminated, what they did was they kind of eliminated the ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba, right? And they just put a quarter on the hi-hat. One, two, three, four, and move the ba 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 one, a two, a three, a four, a over to the bass drum. So we've got that happening. That happened, I would say that happened late 60s, early 70s, but everything happened late 60s, early 70s in rock and roll, didn't it? Like every, like that was the most creative time. It was an amazingly creative time. But that's when you start hearing that, is late 60s, early 70s. So we'll play that for you. Quarters on the hat, moving the shuffle beat, one, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, uh, and variations thereof, to the bass drum. Still got two and four on the snare. Here it comes now. Let's rock. Now we're going to do um, a shuffle 
that I first heard Jeff Porcaro do. Jeff Porcaro is one of my favorite drummers. Of course, we talked about the Rosanna Groove, and I no way do I want to uh, do I want to talk bad about Jeff Porcaro playing Rosanna because wow, that's a killer, that's a killer halftime shuffle. But Jeff Porcaro was also capable of of all sorts of shuffles. He's got a he's got a DVD that you can get a hold of and there's also YouTube clips of Jeff Bacaro playing shuffles um, that are incredible. And the one that I really latched on to, he plays a shuffle. He plays this shuffle where he uses utilizes the ghost notes that um, that he uses on the on the Rosanna shuffle. And he does this. There's a couple songs you can check out for this. He says he got it from the drummer Jim Gordon. Jim Gordon was with Derek and the Dominoes and Traffic, great session drummers from the 1960s and 70s, um, part of the Wrecking Crew, if you've ever seen that movie. But Jim Gordon played on a song called Charlie Freak on a Steely Dan album called uh, Pretzel Logic. And and that was one of Jeff, Jeff Picaro's heroes. And he said he stole that from him, which he's always saying he stole stuff from people. But it sort of becomes this Jeff Picaro thing after a while. And the two two great examples of, of a great Jeff Picaro shuffle, the first one is Boz Skaggs, a song called Lido Shuffle that's actually built around this shuffle. And then there's another one, uh, a guitarist named Les Dudek, who's really a great underrated guitarist that a lot of people haven't heard of. But there's a song called Old Judge Jones. And there's lots of other ones, too. And, of course, he was the king of, like, the big, fat 12-8 beat, if you hear, hear Hold the Line. So the dude really understood triplets. And a lot of drummers really don't have their triplet together that are, like, non-jazz drummers. Really, they, the rock players tend to... I remember there, there was a, a video of Winston Watson who played with Bob Dylan who talked about how Dylan just wanted to play shuffles all night and he said shuffles were the bane of his existence and I thought oh man you're missing out bro but anyway what we have going with the Jeff Picaro shuffle is just like the Purdy shuffle if you've ever checked that out you've got it like a ghost note thing so instead of thinking one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, what we're doing is we're putting that middle note on the snare drum as a ghost note. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a. And then we have to accent two and four, so we've got an accented note followed by an unaccented note. One and a two and, see? One and a both light, <laughs> both left light, a light left. <laughs> one and a two, like that. So, Okay, so that's what this is based on. And of course, if you step down on the hi-hat, you get that shoop. So all I'm doing is that one, a two, a three, a four, a. And if you step down on the hi-hat on quarters, which adds that other thing. Now that is a Bernard Purdy thing. That comes from Bernard Purdy. And uh, but but I heard Picaro play it first. You can check check this out, like I say, on his video, on several recordings. Lido Shuffles, real good one. Old Judge Jones. There's lots of other ones. It actually became kind of a uh, a very popular groove in the middle to late '70s again, and then it kind of disappeared. People weren't down with their shuffle. But if you go to a blues jam, you better know how to play your shuffle. So now you're armed with uh, what is that? Four, five, six shuffles. That's a lot of shuffles. So maybe that'll help you out a little bit. It's all coming out of that swing thing from the big band, and uh, and then we take it and we and we put it in the roadhouse. Put it in the roadhouse. So there's your shuffles for today. Thanks for watching.